The universe is vast and limitless. It's hard to even imagine that on the scale of the universe, we are not even a speck of dust, but at best, a subatomic particle. Hello everyone! How is it possible, however, that the universe is part of something even more massive, something we can only imagine? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our channel. You may have already known, we would be the only ones who raise such issues. Would you like to join us and think about it together? Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well then, let's begin. Is this world real? The ancient philosophers had already asked the questions, are things we see around us real? Do they exist objectively? And can we actually perceive the surrounding world as it is? They were thinking about these things. There were philosophers who thought that everything in the world is a dream or illusion. There is a real reality in a higher dimension, and this world is a reflection of it, is still the better Neoplatonist view. Worse, what we now call computer simulations. This world is an illusory prison, created by the evil Demiurge, was another. It was the old Gnostics who believed that. Of course, they didn't know about what we now call simulated worlds though. Wait a minute, yes you would say. Why the ancient philosophers? They were clever people of course, but they knew much less than we do today, didn't they? The mystery for them was solved long ago. We understand the essence and mystery of nature better than the ancient wise men. What is the point then of going through the dusty old documents of the philosophers except for purely research purposes? In fact, we should not make light of the old ones. At least on this issue. This very moment, scientific research is proving them to be correct. It is in fact impossible for our sense organs to perceive objective reality. If you are watching this video right now on your smartphone, look at it. What do you see? It is a hard, small object. It might be covered with black, white, red, or another color of plastic. Let's talk about something simple. Yes, about color. There is no such thing as color in nature, but rather electromagnetic waves that hit objects around us and are reflected in various ways. Waves of different wavelengths stimulate different receptors in the retina, and when they are all processed by the brain, we see the whole picture. The fact that your cell phone is red actually only means that the wavelengths of light it bounces off stimulate the receptors that perceive red first. A white cell phone bounces off almost any wave with a wavelength that is recognized by any of the color receptors. The seven colors of the rainbow are seen as white sunlight broken up right? A black phone, on the contrary, absorbs all light. If the human eye did not have color receptors or cone cells, the world we see would be black and white, just shades of grey. That is, color too literally exists only in our minds. Next, let's talk about hardness. What is the smallest unit that makes up your cell phone? Every student would answer, it is an atom. Each atom has a nucleus and electrons revolving around it. It is like a miniature solar system. By the way, Rutherford's atomic model that we learn in school is not accurate. At least, it is very simplified. But it clearly shows one important thing. That most parts of the atom are empty. The nucleus and electrons are very small in relation to the atom as a whole. Similar to how the planets, even the sun, are tiny in relation to the entire solar system. Mutual forces hold them together. In the case of a stellar system, it is gravity. In the case of an atom, it is electromagnetism, the strong force and the weak force. When you feel a cell phone, a mouse, a keyboard or a desk, it is because these forces are working to keep the electrons in the atoms at your fingertips from going toward the atoms in those objects to the atoms of those objects. 
In other words, the world is nothing more than a space of interacting electrons and nuclei. The long tentacles they interact with do not actually touch each other. Everything around you, your computer, your desk, yourself, the planets, the stars, the galaxies, is mostly hollow, with various particles sparsely and sporadically existing there. The world on the surface of electrons. What do I exist for? If you have had an existential crisis, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to. But at all times, please wait a little longer to lament. I encourage you to watch this video to the end. Because the most interesting part is yet to come. The word atom itself means indivisible. However, we long ago learned that the nucleus and the electron are not all indivisible in nature and are by no means the smallest block that makes up the world. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons, which are elementary particles called quarks. Electrons, like electron neutrinos, are a type of subatomic particle called leptons. What quarks and leptons consist of? Beyond that, our science can't help us. It is not possible to study them in detail but it is quite possible that those subatomic particles are made up of some blocks, and those blocks are made up of even smaller blocks, and on, and on. My head is spinning. Let us now consider magnitude. Size is also a relative concept. For humans, planets and stars are large, molecules and atoms are small, and subatomic particles are extremely small. But for a virus at the molecular level, an atom is not small at all. If there were an intelligent virus, atoms would be the size of visible atoms. And if it were a human being, much less a planet or a star, the sizes would be so shocking that the viruses would have a hard time opening their mouths. To us, they are as big as the observable universe, consisting of galactic filaments and voids. Please think about this for a moment. It is the molecules called galaxies that make up the various structures of the universe. Then, galaxies are composed of atoms called stellar systems. The stars at the center of a stellar system can be likened to the nucleus at the center of an atom. Then the planets would be the electrons. All human beings spend their entire lives on the surface of these one and only electrons, the planet Earth. Maybe life exists on electrons and quarks. Maybe a civilization has just been born somewhere on your feet, and in your gut, three more civilizations have just been born. Or many more. Joking aside, what we have just explained is that everything that makes up this world is in fact not a simple block, but a structure as complex as our universe. And what if our universe too were actually just a part of something even bigger? One of many universes. You have probably heard about the multiverse hypothesis. We have also made videos on this theory and often mentioned it in videos on other subjects. There are several phenomena that can be explained simply by using this theory. For example, the acceleration of the expansion speed of the universe is thought to be caused by dark energy. In principle, however, dark energy does not exist and the acceleration of the expansion speed may be the result of the gravitational effects of the neighboring universe on our own universe. There are several physical constants that make our universe what it is today. If only one of them had been slightly different, the universe would have looked different. For example, if the constant forces acting on each other between electrons were a little stronger, elements heavier than boron would be unstable, like short-lived isotopes that disappear after a few milliseconds. Let me explain why I reminded you of this. Because researchers estimate that in the multiverse, each pair of physical constants corresponds to one universe. No matter how much you fantasize about phenomena that deviate from the laws of physics, they exist somewhere and are quite natural there. Just as the Earth's gravity and the Earth's orbit around the Sun are ordinary things to us. That is, the universe is vast and also immeasurably numerous and existent. That number is greater than all the grains of sand on all the planets in our observable universe combined. The multiverse is often compared to a ball pool. 
cheese with holes, or air chocolate. The ball in a ball pool, the hole in a cheese with holes, or the bubble in an air chocolate is each universe. But what if the structure of the multiverse were really much, much more complex? And what if our universe were really nothing more than a neutron in some nucleus, or a subatomic particle in some gigantic, unimaginable structure? How small would it be in relation to the whole structure? Like a single cell in the human body, a single quark in an atom, and the solar system in the observable universe. Unfortunately folks, this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Ha! We still don't have the answers to these questions. Another universe, if it existed at all, would be hidden behind the event horizon, from which we would receive no information. However, it could well exist, and there is no reason to believe that our universe is the largest structure of all that could exist. It is up to you to accept or reject it. Please, share your thoughts as well in the comments section. Your opinion always interesting and important to read. With that, I bid you adieu for a while. May we meet again soon. Goodbye.